I have about an hour to kill out in the lake today. Thought about coming down here doing a video about maybe jig fishing in the fall, throwing crankbaits when you got that transition period. But I kind of stopped and I thought for a while, I was thinking, that's just too cliche. You know, I don't want to go and talk about the tactics that everybody knows to use in the fall. So I neared the water's edge of the lake this morning and I knew instantly what I was going to make today's video about. I am doing a little fall topwater fishing. This is one of my favorite things to do during the fall season only because it's a technique that a lot of guys don't do. And it's pretty underrated. Look at that nice fish. I'm gonna go into today's video talking about some of the lures I like to throw during the fall when I'm targeting surface bass and how I like to approach the fall when I'm trying to get a good topwater bite. First with the fish of the day, many more to come. Not the size I'm looking for. Prop fish. Wow. This fish. He crushed that. There's no question that he's not. Man, he just crushed it. I'm a prop bait. Look at that in his mouth. That's crazy. A little stump right then. I'll show you in the video. Tiny stump, and as soon as I got to the midpoint of that stump, I mean, he crushed it. When they're hitting sideways like that, you know you're working it right. Beautiful fall bass. Very chunky, healthy. You know she's feeding. Shad and bluegill and crawls. Wow. Oh, over with this one. Oh god, I lost him. That was a nice one. Dang, he got me right in those pipes. Look at that. That's how he came off. Dang it. Always use good hooks. So I know when I think of fall, I think of two top water lures. One of which being a popper and the other one being a buzz bait. Although they're very effective, I get the feeling that too many anglers are throwing them, especially in pressured lakes. Bass just get too accustomed to that presentation, and there's a limited way you can only fish those lures. So that's when, in my opinion, this little guy comes into play. That being a small, subtle prop bait presentation. This lure, in my opinion, works throughout the entire duration of fall, starting from the last day of summer to pretty much the last day of fall. I've caught fish on lures like this, when my knuckles are bleeding, when I'm gritting my teeth, when it's super cold out, and all I want to do is go in. But because the water temperature is still warm and those fish are still active, they're hitting lures like this that they wouldn't normally hit on a fast moving bug, buzz bait or a bland, lame looking popper. If I'm fishing off a boat and I'm doing this, I keep my boat in the wind generally and I'll fish in the calmer areas. It just kind of gives me a sense of my surroundings and where I should be when I'm throwing this bait. There's that was on like the first twitch. Head first. He ate that bait head first. Look at that fish. Nice bass. See where that bait is? In his mouth? The tail end's sticking out which means he went forward at it. That is the best 
and I mean the best sign. I am a strikes again. Beautiful fish. how deep the water is by sticking my rod in the water and I found out that it was gravel I felt the gravel down there it was about two feet so instead of casting close to the bank I threw it out a little bit because I thought you know they'd be roaming around fall season is great to find roaming fish so that fish was pushed off the bank in shallow water gorgeous fish came off the shore too. Little fall bass. Well, my short-lived topwater bite has officially been ended by the boat traffic and the high sun today. It's actually a little bit too warm for me to even be wearing this sweatshirt. But I learned a few things today, and at the same time I taught you guys a few things today. Maybe something you didn't know about topwater fishing. But for the most part, fish will hit topwater in cold water. They'll hit it in warm water and cold water, and they'll hit it from the start because the beginning of those leaves start falling to the point that they're all gone. Ugh. So the boat traffic just kicked me off the lake for the most part, and I can't even film down there. So I'm up here, I'm gonna really quickly go over and touch base on a few things before I wrap up today's video. It got a little too hot today. The boat traffic slowed down the topwater bite, and of course when that sun comes up, you lose your shade, and that's something that you really have to rely on during this time of year in order to throw this little guy. So I'm just gonna break down really quickly a few things that I like to look for in the fall. One of which is shade. You always wanna rely on shade even when the water's cold because it provides a sense of shelter for those fish. There's not a bunch of sun beating down on their eyes. They don't have eyelids so they can't just close their eyes to avoid the sun. They have to look for other ways to avoid that sun. That being finding shade and cover. The next thing you wanna look for is brush very old timber. Timber that's been standing there for quite some time in the lake. Along with that, I look for junk. And what junk is, is it's basically old docks, decrepit wood and metal in the water. Those type of areas are great for throwing small baits in between two because those small baits are very versatile. You couldn't throw a big glide bait or a big wake bait through something like that because you risk getting tangled up and hung up. With a little bait like this, it's very versatile. You can get it in and out of tight squeezes. The other thing I look for is transition points. That is where rock meets sand, or grass meets wood. It's a place, a break line, where there's a change in the bottom contact or the cover for the most part. So, today's transition point was metal to rock and that fish was actually standing right there. And for whatever reason, those fish use that as an ambush point to attack their prey, whether it be shad, blue eel, etc. And it's a great place to find fish in the fall or year round for the most part. So the equipment that I was using today is actually the same was actually the same rod and reel setup that I use for frog fishing. You may ask why. The reason because is I don't normally set the hook when I'm using baits like this. I mainly just put pressure in the fish in order to get them pinned. And with a seven foot heavy action rod with a fast action tip, I can do that very easily. I don't have to rip them up out of there if I were fishing a frog or like a jig or something like that. I can just put pressure on the fish and get those hooks right in the jaw. And it was working for the most part. I only lost, I think, one bass. And uh, the reel that I'm using is 7.3 to 1 gear ratio. Very key that you use a fast gear ratio because sometimes that fish will hit it and run right towards the boat, boat. So you need to pick up as much line as possible. The line I was using today was SX1 Sunheim Braid. Not recommended. I would recommend using fluorocarbon. The braid doesn't work because as you can see, it gets caught up in the props and it drives me absolutely insane. Use a coated braid or monofilament, something that has high buoyancy and will float. Thanks for watching today's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you learned a little bit about topwater fishing during the fall season and what to kind of do and approach some of these cold water bass. Catch you guys next time on the next episode of Fishing the Midwest.